All right, so we're going to cover um, right triangle trigonometry. So in this lecture, we're going to do a bunch of calculations here related to six special trigonometry ratio of functions. Um, we get to functions later in the course, um, next week, sometime next week. But for now, we're going to look at um, the ratio of how to calculate that depends on different angles of the right triangle. Um, so some of you have known about this, uh, uh, but bear with me here as I give the information again. So when you look at the tri right triangle, there are certain names for the side of the um, of the triangle. Um, so if you have a angle here in this position, so it's called theta. And the side that is across or opposite of the angle is called the opposite side. Um, the side that is next to the theta uh, of the angle is called the adjacent, adjacent side. And the longest side of the right triangle is called the hypotenuse. There are six special trigonometry ratios. Those are side theta, cosine, Tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Uh, for sine of theta, it's the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. For cosine of theta, is the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tension of theta the opposite over the adjacent and cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. So in addition of this type of ratio depends on the side of um, the right triangle. There's all the formula that you can use to calculate tangent of theta and cotangent of theta depending on sine and cosine functions. Um, because tangent of theta is opposite over the adjacent, um, you can divide the top and bottom by the hypotenuse, then you will obtain sine and cosine function in that case. Um, so, a alternative formula for tangent of theta is psi of theta over cosine of theta. And a different formula for cotangent of theta instead of using adjacent over the part uh, over the opposite. What you can do again is that for the adjacent and the opposite, you can divide it by the part news and you will obtain cosine of theta over sine of theta. Everything you close to Thank you. So this could be cosine of theta over sine of theta. Now the last two ratio is a little bit um, rarer that is um, they don't get used that often, but it's still important in the concept of trigonometry. Um, is secant of theta and cosecant of theta. Cosecant of theta 
is 1 over cosine of theta. And cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over secant, um, sorry, psi of theta. All right, so to, to memorize this uh, trigonometry ratio, usually just the first three be important and widely used. Um, there's a phrase, uh, I think some, some of you can help me with this, that um, is called um, what? So, uh, Toa. All right, so it's help you to um, tie up, memorize this trigonometry ratio. All right, so we're going to use this formula, this ratio to evaluate the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent of some special functions. Uh, let me start with something easy. So in this example one, I have the right triangle where one of the angle is 45 degrees. So in this case, the other angle is also 45 degrees. Now, um, we're going to calculate sine of 45 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, so on and so forth, right? So six trigonometry ratio of 45 degree angle. Um, so in order to calculate the sine and cosine um, of 45 degree, what you need to do is you need to calculate all the sides of the right triangle. Here you are given one side to be one, the other side to be one you need to find the longest side of the right triangle and using Pythagorean's theorem to do it. So I call this um, psi A. All right, so by Pythagorean's theorem. What you do is you have A squared equal to one square plus one square or a squared equal to 2, or a is equal to square root of 2. Normally, when you solve for the solutions of an equation, so when you take the square root on both sides of the equations, you should obtain two values, right? Plus and minus. However, we're talking about a sign to the length of a uh, a sign of the triangle, so this has to be a positive value only. Okay, but normally you should obtain plus and minus when you solve for the solution of an equation. Okay, so in this case, a is equal to root two. Now you're going to calculate the trigonometry ratios of 45 degree angle. So the first one is psi of 45 degree is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So one over square root of two. So that's the answer, but the conventions for writing this solution or this result is Radicalize, you need to radicalize this result. That is, you multiply the top and the bottom by square root of two. So that you don't want the radical sign under the denominator. Okay. So here's what you do you multiply and divide by root two. So this gives you root two over two is the answer. For well, cosine of 45 degree angle, um, the ratio is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So again, one over root two, radicalize your answer. 
I multiply the top and bottom by root 2 is equal to root 2 over 2. Any questions on the calculation so far? All right, so tangent of theta or tangent of 45 degree angle, you can use the ratios of opposite over the apartment, uh, sorry, opposite over the adjacent, or you can use the formula that tangent is equal to psi over cosine. So here you have psi of 45 degree angle divided by cosine of 45 degree angle. So I know this is the longer way to do it, but it's, it's going to be very helpful to us when you get to tangent function and cotangent functions and whatnot. So for psi 45 degree angle, this is square root of 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. So of course, it's equal to 1. For cotangent of 45 degree, you have cosine of 45 degree divided by psi of 45 degree angle. Again, you get root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, and it's equal to 1. The next one is secant of 45 degree is equal to 1 over cosine of 45 degree angle. So this is 1 over um, root 2 over 2. So technically, technically, this is the answer, but I want to simplify the answer a little bit. Okay. So now you divide fractions that means you can multiply by the specific form. So this give me 2 over root 2. And then radical like this, so you don't have the radical sign on the denominator. So what you do is you multiply and divide it by root 2 on top and bottom. Right. So you get 2 root 2 divided by 2, or the answer is root 2. Now, I mentioned earlier that secant and cosecant get less, get used a little bit less compared to the other four ratios. Um, however, I just want to spend a little bit of time doing this so that not only we recognize secant and cosecant, but also learning the technique how to manipulate the algebra to get to the answer. Okay. Now, the last one is cosecant of 45 degree angle. I have this is one over psi of forty five degree is one over root two over two. Right. Very similar to secant of forty five degree. You divide your fractions. That means you can multiply by the reciprocal. Then you can multiply the top and bottom by square root of two to radicalize it. And you should have 2 times root 2 divided by 2, which is root 2. Any questions on example 1? Hopefully it's straightforward. Yes. How many of you have seen this calculations already in the past? 
if you would be able to do that. All right, so uh, bear with me here. Let's move on to example two. Evaluate trigonometry ratios of 33 and 60 degree angle. So you have to be very careful in this uh, example because you have two different angles that you need to evaluate. So this is the right triangle. One angle I give 30 degree. Of course, the other angle is 60 degree. Yeah. Now, you, when you calculate sine, cosine, tangent, and cotangent, and whatnot, it's going to be different. Okay. Because when you look at sine of 30 degree, this side is the opposite side. You with me on that? And this is the adjacent side of 30 degree angle. However, when you switch to 60 degree angle, this side becomes the opposite, and this one is the adjacent. Okay, you with me on that? Okay, so it depends on the angle, so you have to be careful when you calculate sine and cosine functions um, or ratio. Um, depending on the sun. Okay. So now, again, to calculate the ratio, you just need the length of all the sine in the right triangle. Here you have one side is equal to one. The apart use is equal to two. That means you need to calculate the sine of the value of this sign. Okay. Um, again, use the Pythagorean theorem. So I call this A. I want to calculate the value of A using the Pythagorean theorem. So by the Pythagoreans. So what you do is you have A squared plus 1 squared equal to 2 squared. And you get a squared equal to 4 minus 1. This is 3. Then you take the square root on both sides of the equations. Again, normally you should get plus and minus, minus root 3. But in this case, a is the value of the length of the sign. So a should just be the positive value of root 3. So here, a is equal to root 3. Any questions? Okay, good. So now let's do sine of 30 degree angle. Is the opposite over the hypotenuse? So that could be one half. Right, again, the opposite side of 30 degree angle is this side. Okay. And the adjacent is with the length of root three. Now, cosine of 30 degree angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that is root 3 over 2. The tangent of 30 degree is psi of 30 degree divided by cosine of 30 degree angle. So that is one half divided by root three over two. All right. So you divide fractions and you multiply by the reciprocal of them. So that could be one half times two over root three. And the two cancel out. And you're left with one over root three. So again, you want to radicalize the result. So multiply and divide by square root of three. Okay. 
this get me root 3 over 3. Then cotangent of 45, sorry, not 45, 30 degree angle is cosine of 30 divided by psi of 30. So root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. So this is equal to root 3. So again, what I did is that uh, since we divide fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So you divide 1 half, that means you multiply by 2 over 1. And the two cancel out, and you left with root three only. Any questions so far? Good. All right. Now secant of thirty degree angle is one over cosine of thirty. So that is one over root three over two. become 2 over the root 3. And again, radicalize the, um, the results. So you multiply and divide by root 3. And you're left with 2 root 3 over 3. Let me rearrange things a little bit. Now, if you wish you can do that with your paper, yes. Copy and paste. All right, one last ratio here. Cosecant of 30 degree. It's one over secant, um, sorry, sine of 30 degree, or one over one half, or two for that matter. All right, so let me quickly correct um, 60 degree angle. Okay, so for sine of 60 degree angle is um, the Opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this case, the opposite is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 degree is their adjacent. So the adjacent in this case is 1. So you have 1 half. Tangent of 60 degree is sine of 60 divided by cosine of 60 degree is root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. This is equal to root 3. Cotangent of 60 degree is cosine of 60 degree divided by psi of 60 degree is one half over root three over two or one half times two over root three well this is root one over root three or square root three over three for the answer again i want to mention again that if you give me this one, one over root three, that's totally fine. I just want to give you different options here. So when you use textbook or you count the results differently, you don't get surprised. Okay, so one over root three is fine. Root three over three is also fine. Secant of 60 degree is one over cosine of 60 degree well this is one over one half or two 
and cosecant of 6 degree angle is 1 over psi of 60 or 1 over root 3 over 2 or 2 over root 3 or 2 times root 3 over 3. Yes. Yeah, you radicalize the results by multiplying and divided by the square root of 3. Good. Any questions? 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 Good. Okay. Now, let me move on to this table. So, this is a very important table. Again, when you get to, if you learn, if you major in mathematics, physics, computer science, or this table is quite important. So, in a way, you have to memorize this table, and I will show you the different steps you can memorize the table. Um, so, first, uh, I have different roles here, right? So the first row is the degree angle. Um, I want to convert that into the radian measure. Um, so zero per degree corresponding to zero radians. 33 corresponding to what radian? Pi over six, right? So pi over six radian. And again, if you don't remember how to convert that, go back to the last lecture and do the exercise on how to convert from one degree from one measure to another measure. Okay, so 30 degree is pi over six, 45 degree is pi over four, then 60 degree is pi over three, three. and 90 degree is pi over two. Good. Got it? It takes a little bit of time. So here, the corresponding radiant measure is zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over 3, and pi over 2. All right, so here's the trick. And this is only for this special angle, OK? And for sine, the result of sine of this angle, what you do is one, two, three, four, five. They always divide it by two. With me on that. So for two divided by two, always. So that's the denominator. So the ratio, you get the ratio. Now for the numerator, what you do for sine is you start with square root of zero, and then square root of one, square root of two, square root of three, and square root of four. Good. Yes. Eventually, yes. Bear with me here. Bear with me here. So I want to use this and move on to cosine. I will get back to the same. So cosine theta is going to be very similar, especially for the denominator. They all divided by two. Yeah, divided by two. So for cosine of theta divided by two. And then whatever you have for sign, just split it back, one. And you start at square root of four, then go down to square root of three, square root of two, square root of one, and zero. Okay. So that's the trick. For sine and cosine, they all divided by two. Okay. But for sine, you start with square root of zero, go down to square root of four, and then you flip it. Okay. Um, as you notice, you can actually simplify some of the results that you see there. 
So square root of zero divided by two, obviously it's just zero. So instead of writing square root of zero over two, I set that equal to zero. Now the next one, square root of one over two, instead of that, just y one half. Now root two over two is just that. You cannot do anything else with that. Root three over two is just a little bit like that. Then square root of four over two, so square root of four is two over two. It's equal to one. Then you do the same for the numbers in the cosine theta. So this one is one as well. And the square root of four over two, square root of four is two. Two divided by two is one. Root three over two, just leave it like that. Root two over two, like that. Root one over two is one half. And square root of zero over two is zero. We good? Okay. So that's one way to memorize the table. Another way to memorize the table is from the left hand. Bear with me here. Beautiful left hand. Yes, it's an art, people. I'm going to sell it for $2 million. All right. So for the thumb is zero degree angle. The index is pi over six or 33. The middle finger is pi over 4 or 45 degree. The ring finger is pi over 3 or 60 degree. And the pinky finger is pi over 2 or 9 degree. Good. Now, the formula that you need to remember, the only formula you need to remember is this. Square root of n over 2. It's very similar to what you see over there. For n is the number of fingers. So bear with me here. All right, so this is my left hand. You count the number of, so this is zero. Now we want to calculate sine of zero degree. We count how many angles you have below it. How many, sorry, how many fingers you have below it? How many fingers you have below it? Ah, zero, right. So zero, so zero, square root of zero divided by two, zero. Okay, now this one, so I, this is wrong. Right? So this is um, pinky finger, this is the ring finger. So the ring finger is 60 degree, uh, 30 degree of pi over six. How many finger below it? One, so square root of one over two is one. Corresponding to this, okay. Now the middle finger is 45 degree angle. How many fingers below it? Two, so root two over two, right? And then 60 degree angle, how many finger below it? Three, so root three over two. And then the thumb is 90 degree angle, how many finger below it? Four, so square root of four over two, two over two is one. You with me? Okay. So now, how to calculate cosine? You count how many fingers you have above. So this is zero degree. How many fingers do you have above? Four, so square root of four over two, so it's one. Okay. Now, 30 degree angle, how many fingers do you have above it? Three, so root three over two. And then middle finger, how many fingers do you have above it? Two, so root two over two. 60 degree angle, how many fingers do you have above that? One, so one and a half. Then here, 90 degree angle, how many fingers you have above it? Do you have another finger bend? 
Get it? That's the trick. Good. All right. So for tangent and cotangent, unfortunately, you have to do with calculations. But if you know or memorize this or know how to do the trick on sine and cosine functions uh, or sine and cosine ratios, it would be easier to calculate tangent and cotangent. Okay. Uh, so for tangent, you have psi over cosine. All right. So that is zero over one. Zero over one is zero. Good. Right. For tangent of 30 degree angle, you have one half divided by square root of three over two. You have to do a calculation to so that. And this gives you one over three, root three over three. Here, Tension of 45 degree, square root of 2 over 2 divided square root of 2 over 2, over 1, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the calculations. So here you get 0 over 1 is equal to 0. For 30 degree angle, you have 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, or this is 1 over root 3. Or root three over three. The next one is root two over two divided by root two over two is equal to one. Now here you have root three over two divided by one half. Well, this is just root 3. Tension of 90 degree angle. What did you do? You do 1 divided by 0. What did you get? What is the answer? Now, similar to sine because sign, you can kind of lift the results back and forth. Right. You can apply that to tangent and cotangent results. Right. Whatever you have the tangents, just limit it. Okay, or just mirror it. Here, the undefined results here that root 3, 1, root 3 over 3, then 0. You okay with that? Okay. So this is undefined. This is root 3. This is 1. This is root 3 over 3. This is 0. Again, um, if you don't want to do the flip, um, if you want to do calculations, Again, this the ratio cotangent of theta is equal to cosine over sine. So you do one divided by zero, you define the zeros. Um, you do square root of three over two divided by one half. Then again, root two over two divided by root two over two. Here, one half divided by root three over two. Here, zero divided by one divided by zero. Cool. Okay. So this table is very important in the quiz and the test. So um, you're going to have a quiz next Tuesday, Monday is the And I will ask you this. Like this. Okay. So no. Okay. All right. Uh, any of the text. For sure, there will be one question. Looks like this. Cool. I technically give you the problem for the exam. All right. Not the practice, not just the practice exam, the actual exam will have this paper. For sure. Good? We clear? Yeah. No, no, no. The final, the final exam. I don't want to stress you out. The final exam.
All right, so the next example is something that is not a special angle, right? just some angle. So here you have um, the side is one times three, the other side is four. Now you calculate the hypotenuse value of the hypotenuse. So this one is A. So by the Pythagoreans, theorem, you have three square plus four square equal to a square, or nine plus 16 equal to a square, or 25 equal to a square, or a is equal to five. All right, so let's do calculations on sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So for sine of theta, because this is not a special angle, so I don't know the exact value of theta, just theta. So the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that could be 4 over 5. Cosine of theta is adjacent over the hypotenuse so that's 3 over 5 tangent of theta is psi of theta over cosi of theta so you get 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 5 so 4 over 5 times 5 over 3 so this is 4 over 3 Well, cotangent of theta is cosine of theta over psi of theta. So it's 3 over 5 divided by 4 over 5. Skip me. 3 fourth. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. So 1 over cosine of theta is 1 over 3 over 5. Or 5 over 3. Cosecant of theta is 1 over psi of theta, or 1 over 4 over 5, or this is 5 over 4. So if you notice from this calculation, from the all the calculations that we have done so far, tangent and cotangent values are reciprocal of one another. So secant, that's it, sorry. Um, and secant is one over cosine, so you know for that, and cosecant is one over cosine. Good, cool. All right, so one we have one last example here. So this is not a special angle either. Um, so the sine is a little bit weird here. So one side you have 12, the other side you have 13. You need to calculate if you need the summit. 
Again, we're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So here is A. So by the Pythagorean's theorem, we have that A squared plus 12 squared equal to 13 squared. What is a square, a 12 square equal to? Anyone know? 144. And 13 square? One. And a squared, therefore, is 169 minus 144. What is that equal to? Huh? Yes, so a is equal to 5. Well, you calculate the ratio psi of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse 5 over 13 and cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse Then tension of theta is psi of theta over cosine of theta, or well, 5 over 13 divided by 12 over 13, or well, you do 5 over 13 times 13 over 12, or well, 5 over 12. So tension of theta is cosine of theta divided by psi of theta. 12 over 13 divided by 5 over 13. Secant of theta is 1 over cosine of theta. A 1 over 12 over 13. Well, 13 over 12. And cosecant of theta is 1 over a psi of theta, or 1 over 5 over 13, or 13 over 5.